morning. Morning. Well, I hope y'all are ready for today. If y'all don't mind, we're going to talk and sing about Jesus today. And if you mind, we're going to do it anyway. Because this is church and it's His day. And we're going to talk, be talking about Jesus today. Because there's nothing more important or better to talk about than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the close of our service, we're going to go to the Lord's table and have the Lord's Supper together. So this is going to be a special focus today. So um, I'm glad you're here. We're excited. Okay, where's, uh, where's my wrestler? Where's Josh? Come here, boy. There we go. I told y'all I got a new bodyguard. Come on. Are you here? Awesome. And, and you know, I was thinking, 
about what a beautiful place and uh, how there are places like that. You, you have a happy place, the place that you like to go. Uh, I have a couple, one of the, most of them involved being close to the beach. But um, here's the thing, it's good, it's great to go visit and see your family and so on. But I, I was just thinking on the way back, I said, you know, man, that was such an awesome trip. But this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. You know, this is, this is home. Cabarrus County, North Carolina. Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. This is where uh, God has called us. And as much as I enjoyed Colorado, and I really did, uh, I felt kind of guilty for not seeing my, my family very much, but um, I just know that this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is the right place for us. This is where God has called us. And this is the people that I'm supposed to be with. And so, uh, as, as good as that was, and as good as it is for you to go to your happy place, uh, you know, don't miss where you're supposed to be. In your place with your people. Which is where we are today. And I don't know, that, that just kind of overwhelmed me. Uh, God is good. So, uh, it was a great week. I hope you had a great week as well. We put this here. Alright, several announcements. Get your bulletin. And there's a couple things. The first thing is the soup kitchen. Now, in your bulletin, it says today. Well, that's not exactly true. In fact, that's not true at all. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mistake. It should be next Sunday. Is that correct? Yes. So, soup kitchen is next Sunday after church. Now, that's on me because I'm supposed to proof these. They send me the bulletin and I proof them and I missed it. So, my bad. Uh, but anyway, soup kitchen is next Sunday after church out at the barn. It is awesome. Great food for a great cause. Helped us raise a little money for our missions trip. And the missions team will be telling you more about that. Okay? Um, also, in your bulletin, and then Kathy, you can come on up and be ready to do your announcements as well. Um, Alright, also in the bulletin, we have mission trip interest. If you're interested, this will be our second official mission trip this summer. Uh, Tuesday night at 6.30 at the barn. Um, March 20, not this week, right? March 20. Is that this week? No, next week. March 20. So if you're interested in the mission trip, here's a place for you to go to get answers and get yourself all plugged in for that. Joy Prom is coming up. Last week we heard from Sherry. She showed us some pictures about Joy Prom. And I've had a lot of people really interested in Joy Prom. Here's what I want you to do. If you're interested in Joy Prom, we can go as volunteers. We can help. We can get t-shirts. We can... Be there, set up, help with all that. If you're interested in doing that, Bill North, stand up. Bill is our Joy Prom contact. So if you are interested in Joy Prom, you see Bill and he'll give you time and details. And I hope that you can be involved with Joy Prom. It's awesome. The Ignite Leadership is coming up. And the rest of these things are coming up soon. So I just want to keep these in front of you. Now, finance team. Kathy, that's a quick report. <laughs> I do numbers. I do not have So, um, anyway, we're not going to have, um, I'm not going to do a formal financial presentation, but we're handing out the pamphlets right now. Uh, we don't want to take away from um, the service with financial information, <laughs> even though it's necessary to keep us going and it's a great report. But anyway, if you have questions, about anything with the finances that we're handing out, you feel free to come to prayer planning, um, really any night, but especially tonight. If that doesn't suit for you, you come and see me or any of the finance team members. And just so you know who those people are, um, I, I'm one, um, Jim Rice, I don't think he, I think he came back here out of town, uh, Megan Cooper, I think she's born out from skating, and um, our newest team member is Jake Hunt. So we are so excited to have him, um, and we're we're going to be adding another person too. Um, Ray, his work has stepped up, so he's he's going to have to back out. Although we haven't really let him yet, so we're still holding on to him. Um, anyway, I'm taking too much. 
time. So just know that this is the financial update and the period that it covers, this was for our last calendar year. So you can see, we also report on attendance information so you can see by month what the averages are. Um, and then I show what the receipts were by month. Um, and those are total receipts including what came in for the building. So it's not just what is brought in for operating needs. Um, so that was great. And then I show how we spent that money is on the next page. And then I give you an update of where we stand right, it was actually I guess Wednesday night. But what we have in the bank, we have three accounts and it tells you what those balances are. And the last page, the very back, is what the budget is for this year, for 2018. So again, if you have questions, reach out to us or come to prayer complaining. Thank you, Kathy. We, uh, we, from the very beginning, we, we set a course and we wanted to be very transparent in every aspect of our ministry. And so, um, normally, quarterly, we present this report Sunday morning so everybody gets it, can have all that, can see it, and there it is. Everything's out there. If you have any questions, you can see these people, you can come Sunday night. We have a financial report every Sunday night at Prayer and Planning. And, uh, so, and that's for everybody. So everybody is free to have any information that you need about the church's finances. So thank you for the hard work the finance team does. All right. Um, and some of you, maybe you're thinking, well, we didn't do prayer time. What's the matter, preacher? Y'all want to pray at your church? Well... No, we pray in our church, but it, we're gonna we're gonna do prayer time, but we're gonna do it later in the service. We're going to uh, work on some our format a little bit and, and adjust things a little bit here and there because I don't like to get boring and predictable. So that you sit this okay. Now we're gonna do a welcome, and now he's gonna bring kids up there. Now we're gonna have somebody do prayer, and then we're gonna do all this, and I'm just gonna snore through that because I already know what's gonna happen. Well, we're tricking you today because we're gonna change things up a little bit, so you have to stay awake and pay attention, so you really don't miss anything. I am thrilled that you're here. Uh, it has been a great week. I want you to know that we are making significant progress on our move to the mill. That's our next big project. And uh, we, we have had a great week in that regard. And so just a lot of exciting things going on. Keep the bulletin with you so you know what's going on. And uh, hopefully that, yes ma'am. CPR 24, oh okay. This 24, okay, that's it tomorrow. Four slots open for our CPR. Okay, now, uh, I need to mention place. Do you want to talk about place? Sure. Or do you want me to talk about place? Today's the last day of sign up. Place is this Friday and Saturday. And we have uh, the Stone Age sign up is here with Penny. So you can go see her. And the New Age sign up is with her daughter Sue. So, there's absolutely no excuse for you to miss out on this place weekend. You say, well, what is place? Place is what we use here at our church for you to, to become more aware of how you're gifted and where you fit into this church, local church ministry, and what we do and how you fit. It'll be Friday night. There will be supper. It will be Saturday morning up until about noon or 1 o'clock or so. And there will be some lunch. So if you have not been to place, I really would like you to go this weekend, Friday night, Saturday. You'll love it. It's a game changer. So I hope you will go for that. Okay. Uh, I think that's all of our announcements. We're going to take a break. Let the kids go to their classes. Then we'll come back and be ready to work. I have one more announcement that you need to be aware of. So, everybody listen up. My friend Penny is going to come and make a really special announcement. So, here she is. Hello, church. My name is... <laughs> My name is Penny. Uh, <laughs> and as you all know, uh, very young children and very old people can say anything and get away with it. So that's why I'm making this announcement. I've been chosen. 
I belong to the Drake family. You may have, some of you may even have noticed them hanging around in, on the fringes. Uh, anyway, the Drake family loves me. And every time they go to the mall, or to the movies, or out to eat, they always say, Lele, Lele, you want to go out to eat with us? And I think, oh, that's so sweet. And I say, sure. And then they say, bring your BFP. Anybody know what BFP is? No, big fat purse. <laughs> I'm finally getting to the announcement. I love old business. This is only a three hour service. <laughs> he loves me. Well, so next next Sunday after church, we're having the soup kitchen. And the really good news is that we've done this before. And everybody loves the soup kitchen. And the money goes for the Nicaragua mission trip. And every time we do the soup kitchen, more people come. And we put out more soup. And here's the bad news. Every time we do this, we get less and less money. Everybody loves it. And everybody eats a lot. And last time we could hardly pay for the soup. So, church, remember I'm an old person, okay, church, we want you to come to the soup kitchen. We want you to eat a lot, but we want you to bring your BLP. Thank you so much. No, no children or old people were harmed in the making of this happening.
you know, uh, everybody has a story. All of y'all have a story. Our stories are all different. I hope at the core, at the center of your story is the cross. It's where it all began. It's where everything that matters in life goes back, takes us back to the cross. And then there's a neat story I wanted you to hear today. So Bobby, if you come on up. Bobby has a neat story. And I want him to share, I ask him to share his a little bit of his story with you today. Alright, I'm pretty nervous. Uh, I don't like talking from my people, so I'm just using this as an example that the devil's working. Uh, I met with David a couple weeks ago and told him what God has been doing, even though I haven't been here. Um, my testimony starts on June 16, 2016. That's the day I lost my father. June 16th, I lost my father. I met with David. I was in a good place. But y'all know, many of y'all know I'm in law enforcement. Uh, I work all the time. I have a lot of downtime. I get a lot of thinking going on. Devil was really working. I, I'll be honest. I try to keep it clean. I was pissed at God. Uh, how he took my father. Uh, how many of you know? I dealt with it for a year uh, before my father passed. <clears throat> so when I was working off duty, I, I just signed up for everything. Everything I could take, I worked. My wife knows she was my rock. She took care of her kids. Uh, she didn't know the extent, but I literally was trying to kill myself. Working too much. I was trying to trying to overwork so I could probably have a heart attack and see my father again. Uh, but the time that I was working off duty, obviously, there's not too many nice people out late at night. I usually get home 3 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes a couple hours sleep, go right back to work. Uh, daughters, they were, uh, they were tough. It's like, Dad, why you got to work all the time? It's like, I'm just providing for y'all. But they never knew the extent. I told my wife after Christmas why I was doing what I was doing. And, uh, but the whole time I was working, I was like, I kept, you know, sometimes I pray God to hey, take me out. You know, I want to see my father again. You because know? you never realize what you miss when you can't talk. But while I was working, I, I realized I had kids, I had a wife, I had people that actually loved me. I mean, my my in-laws, plenty of cookouts, birthday parties, I missed because of my selfish act. So while I was working off duty, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of homeless, dealing with a lot of drunks, a lot of bad people. So I said, God, there's got to be something that you're doing for me. Why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I was like, when I was working with the homeless, I was like, you know, my job on these off duties is to run the homeless away. Well, where are they going to go? Nowhere. They have nowhere to go. They have no food. So as a small gesture, I was like, you know, go give me a case of water and give me a big variety bag of potato chips. And I'm going to go around and each homeless people that I meet to run off. I'm going to say, hey, here, I know you're hungry. So it just started with that small gesture. And then I got an email in my work. Uh, we had an intern that worked for the TCA's office. Her mother was diagnosed with cancer. And she was the sole provider. So I was like, you know, I got to do something. You know, because nobody 
knew what I dealt with with my father. And I couldn't imagine what was going on because I had five kids and two adults. And I said, you know, we've got to do something. So I went to my work. I said, they sent the email out because they want us to step up. So we need to step up and help this family. My goal was to raise $1,500 for the family just for a month's worth of expenses. And after everything was done, we raised $2,300 plus provided Christmas dinner for the family. And that was a wake-up call for me. I was like, you know, God's saying, hey, I'm not done with you yet. And then, I never shared, and my daughter don't even know. <sighs> She sent me, she sent me a text one morning when I was out of work. My daughter never knew what I did. I keep everything away from my kids, what I deal with. And she sent me a text. She said, you're inspiring to me. You made me want to do what I believe I can do. I heard that you helped save someone's life. You raised money to help the family. I love you. You are an amazing person, father, and leader. And so forth. And that's what it's about. I want to raise my kids right. So, another night, I was working off duty at the apartment complex that I work at. And I saw, you know, some store clerks chasing this guy. So, obviously, I had to go back. And I found out the true story. The guy was a homeless guy. He was hungry. He was cold. So I was like, I told the manager of the store, I said, you know, I said, There's, how much is that? You know, he stole a, a sub sandwich, I think a 40 ounce beer. So I told the guy, I said, you know, I ran him for warrants. He didn't have any warrants. So I told him, I said, hey, I'm going to buy you that sub, but I'm not going to buy the beer. What kind of other drink do you want? He said, Mountain Dew. I said, that's my favorite. I'm going to go buy you one too. And uh, so, me and the manager went back to the store. I bought the sub, I bought the Mountain Dew for him, and bought myself one. <laughs> and I walked back to the guy, I said, hey, here you go. And I said, here's some ham ones. I said, because I know it's cold, and I know you're hungry. And then, I believe it was one day after the New Year, I had just got off lunch, I called my wife at lunch all the time, and I was going back into work, she calls me, she said, Bobby, she said, you know, I talked to such and such, and she was calling the, she calls and checks to see if people can make their payments on their cemetery plots. And the lady's like, you know, I'm having a rough time, you know, she's like, so my wife, you know, is nosy as she is sometimes. <laughs> she, she asked, she's like, well, well, what's wrong? She's like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm struggling, but, you know, here, I'm going to pay my $75. She said, well, do you have food and so forth? She said, well, you know, not really. Uh, but, you know, I'm still going to pay me for $75. My wife's like, no, no, you ain't going to do it. I'm going to wait this month. And she called me, she said, Bobby, she said, I think we got to do something. And I said, you know what? I ain't even worried about it. You just let me know what she needs, and we're going to go get it. And me and my daughter, daughters, went one night. Matter of fact, it was a Monday night because she had her meeting. And uh, one of the audience just stocked up. And that's what I try to teach my kids about being a leader. And the, the moral of the story is me and David met a couple weeks ago. And uh, boy, the devil was trying me that day because uh, I ended up getting into a situation in court, a courtroom and I had to make a couple rests. And I think I was supposed to meet him at 6 o'clock. I didn't leave work. So 6.15 because I was dealing with intake. Uh, and then coming home, you know, usually no traffic, but they had the whole road shut down. Davis takes me, you all right, bud? Like, I'm getting there, I promise you, I'm coming because I know God's work, or devil's working against it because I have good stuff. And um, so when we were talking, the ultimate goal is there's so many people in need and I love missions. I don't take away from the missions. But I've always said to Dave, Dave knows me from back at the old church. Uh, 
I've always said there's a need in the U.S. There's so much of a need because whether people believe the stories of the homeless, I mean, a lot of the homeless, they fall hard trying to lose their jobs. It's not that they're substance abusers and that's just the path they chose. A lot of the people that I've dealt with and run into have just lost jobs, lost hard times. They have no family left to help them out. So then they're left stranded. And when we were talking, if you were to go, and I'm speaking on Charlotte just because I work in Charlotte, but I seen it in Concord the other night. But if you were to go around and try to give someone a job as homeless, there's nowhere for them to go clean up. There's nowhere for them to shave. There's no decent clothes for them to wear. So nobody's going to hire. So it's going to be a revolving door. So we were talking that. I know David said that he would like to start a, like a pantry, and I'm with that, you know, and I, I would tell any of y'all in here, if you know of anybody, I don't care who it is, that needs a fence put up, grass cut, get with David, call me, David has a number, I would do it, because it's about helping people, and in the spare of the moment, if someone falls on hard times, you know, we could just go to the pantry and get food and take it to them and supply them and tell them it'll be all right. God loves you, no matter what. But I, I wanted to, I brought my wife up one because I was nervous. <laughs> and, and I know the devil was working on me. But it was both of us. Because when I helped that family, it's not about how much money I gave. But I always took it to my wife, and I said, I feel I have to do something. And that's why when she brought it to me about the woman that she was working with, I said, let's do it. You know, so I just encourage everybody, let's, let's help people out, uh, especially the homeless, because there's a dire need. on the other side of the street intentionally to avoid the problem. You walk right into the problem. Well, that's none of my business. Here's the question. At a very, very low, dark time in Bobby's life, brokenness, God showed him And here's my question for you. Are you on mission? I didn't say, are you going on a missions trip? Are you going to do missions? I'm saying, are you on mission? Wherever you are. You, your, your story don't have to be like Bobby's story. That's his story. But you have a story. And you're where you are. You ever feel, oh God, why do I have to go through this? He has a place for you and a purpose. And somebody he wants you to see. See, sometimes in order for people to see Jesus, they have to see you. So, the cross. That's his cross. We're going to sing about Jesus' cross. But you and I have a cross too. We avoid it. Take it up. I appreciate Bobby being honest and vulnerable enough to share his story, and I hope that inspires you guys.
we uh, wanted to change it up a little bit today. And so we're going to do prayer time now. And so what I'd like to do is, is, I don't know, you know, we all grew up in different ways in different places. And I grew up in a little bitty church in this valley in East Tennessee. There was a river, a big, a big side of the mountain with cliffs and a river. And down by the river in the bottoms of the town was my little church. And uh, we would have an altar of prayer. And so the preacher would get up and he'd say, all right, church, we're going to go to prayer. And I'd like to invite you to come, if you'd like to come to the altar and pray. And I always thought, okay, I guess everybody does that. And uh, I, I liked it. I thought it was good to come and kneel and to, to, be, to have an altar that was friendly. And I want our church to have an altar. And, and I understand their logistics and challenges here and, and and we're limited in certain ways but we can come to pray and, and I, but you don't have to come to the altar let me just make sure everybody under, you don't have to you may be limited and not be able to do that but we're going to go to prayer before we have a, a, our message today and continue on with our service and and there's a in your bulletin there's a prayer list that we try to keep before our people so that we know who can who can we pray for and what needs we have and uh, if you have needs you can uh, include them in the list but uh, rather than talking about specifics today I, I'm just going to uh, lead us to prayer so as Joy plays if you would like to come and find a spot maybe there's just something really specific on your heart maybe something just real personal real private or you just want to come and, and uh, pray uh, the altar is open so at this time, I would like to invite those of you who would like to, to come to the altar, find a spot, and pray. No pressure. You don't have to do that. But if you'd like to, the altar is open at this time. Father, it's, it's just good to know that we can come and talk to you. Sometimes it's hard to talk to others, things that are inside of our hearts that are private, hurts, disappointment, frustration. So Lord, right now, I just want to kind of, I want to speak uh, on behalf of everyone. God, so I just would like to invite you to look into our hearts. Because God, you already see. You, you already know what's there. Lord, you know how inadequate that we are. You know how broken we are. You know how flawed we are. And you love us anyway. Lord, can I just thank you for, for taking what I deserve? You, thank you for taking my cross. I earned it. I deserved it. God, I just want to thank you for taking my place. And Lord, there is now no condemnation on me because of your blood that you gave for us. And God, I, I just want to embrace that today. Lord, may we stop striving and trying to be a good person. Because we can't. 
and we don't have to. <coughs> because you have accepted us in all of our brokenness. Lord, we embrace your grace today, your forgiveness, your love. Lord, if, if we can, we just would like to just crawl up into your arms today and let you love us. Lord, I, I want to pray today for those that are lonely. For those that, uh, that need something today. God, I want to pray for those outside of this building today, in this community. And Lord, we, we get in our cars, we drive to our churches, and we walk right by people that, that are lost. And they need what we have. So Lord, thank you. And, and help us. Help us to be aware. To be a little bit more open. To be a little more patient. To be a lot less judgmental. To be more loving. To our husbands and our wives and our children and our families. Lord, thank you. Thank you that there's a place that we can come and be together. God, I pray that you bless our church. Lord, I pray that our church would be different. That it wouldn't just be something to do on Sunday morning. God, never let us serve you to appease our conscience. God, help our motives to be pure. Help us to be open and honest with you. And God, forgive us for the hypocrisy that, that we live daily. So Lord, today we are throwing ourselves at your mercy. We are abandoning our ways to accept yours. And Father, we want to say that we love you. And, and we're so limited in our capacity to do that, but, but however we can, we, we just want to say that we love you today. And we thank you. And we worship you. Now open our hearts and our minds. May we prioritize listening to you and your word. Help us to really have church today. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. We'll start a new series next week. Four parts. We're going to study a, a person, a character study from the Old Testament. His name is Samuel. Love the Old Testament. We're going to have fun in there next for the next four Sundays. Hope we come and come ready to listen and learn and uh, see what God has for us. Hebrews chapter 1. We've talked the last two Sundays about who is God. The attributes of God. How do you describe God? How, how, what are His characteristics? What are His traits? And today, as, as we kind of wrap that up, I thought it would be a really good time for us to have you, to have the time when we, we stop and we reflect a little bit about who God is. And, and not only God, but today specifically, who is Jesus? And, and as we did with God, we want to talk about some of the traits and, and characteristics of Jesus. Who is Jesus? What are some attributes that Jesus has? Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3. Let's, let's read. God 
<clears throat> at sundry times or many different ways and times and, and parts, in many various manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So a little bit of a reflection, we're looking back, and, and we see that the Almighty God spoke to us. He, he invaded our planet, and he, he entered into our lives, and He did that in various ways over the years. We see in verse 1, And God hath in these, interesting term, last days, spoken unto us by His Son, who is Jesus, whom He hath appointed heir of all things. He's talking about His Son now. By whom also He made the worlds. Jesus. Verse 3. And, and boy... There's, there's enough in verse 3. If, if verse 3 was all we had of the Bible, it's enough. It's all here in verse 3. The whole message is in verse 3. Listen. Who being, this is Jesus, the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins. Purged is a really important word. It's a strong word. It, it brings a sense of, of, of scrubbing clean. The, the filthiness and washing it away. Purging. This, this one who brings the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. And He upholds all the things by the word of His power when He had by Himself purged our sins. Then He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. God is spirit. God is not someone we can hug or shake hands with. Physically, God can't hold you. Oh, He can hold you. But He's a spirit. We can discern some of His attributes. There are many ways to see God. Listen, you can see God. If you're looking for God, you can see God and hear God and know His presence. If you're really earnestly looking for God. Man, he, he will reveal Himself to you in any place in sometimes the most inopportune times. You just, you just stop and you say, there's God. There He is. His power in a bad storm. His goodness in the bounty of the earth. His love in the loving actions of people around us. People like a police officer who has to work in the middle of the night in places that none of you want to go. You can see God. You can see His love. I, I believe that, man, you've got to really work hard at ignoring God. Somebody's really got to work hard. We also know God's attributes through the Scriptures. I hope that you understand at this church that we want to place a, a, a premium on God's Word. It's more important than anything else we do on Sundays. I hope you understand that. We, we do other stuff. We, we do events and activities, but it's, it's, nothing is more important than listening to God speak to us through His Word. And, and we, we have uh, tools. There are daily bread devotionals. Uh, there are discipleship books. We, we, 
everything we do, we want to get you in God's Word. Because His Word is the powerful element in your life that changes you. His Word. God speaks to us through His Word. Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3, teaches us that in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets many times in various ways. But today, today, in these last days, He has spoken to us through His Son. Jesus Christ. I want to talk about Jesus today. Whom He appointed heir of all things. And through whom also He made the universe through His Son. The Son is the radiance of God's glory. And the exact representation of His very being. Sustaining all things by His powerful Word. I want to talk to you today about Jesus. There's no other name like Jesus. There's not any other person like Jesus. As the old preacher said, ain't nobody like Him. And He's right. Because there ain't nobody like Jesus. Jesus models for us the attributes of God. So when you can't feel it or see it or hear it, just look to Jesus. Because it's all there. It's all in Him. He models the attributes of God, especially those attributes that are communicable, that we study, that we can share. Jesus. And I want to just look at four today. Four quick characteristics to help us get to know Jesus a little better. Number one, you have your bulletin there, there's, there should be in there uh, just to help you follow and think and, and uh, maybe if you want to jot down some of these thoughts or verses or whatever. But number one, Jesus showed His love for all people. I, I cannot... Love is synonymous with Jesus. You can't bring up Jesus without thinking of His love. He showed His love for all people. He didn't have favorites. Yeah, He did. Yeah, He did. In fact, we're all His favorites! We're all His favorites! There's nobody that's not His favorite. It doesn't matter what you smell like or look like or where you've been, or what you did last time. It doesn't matter. You're His favorite. <coughs> I wish somehow we could get... I, I think society... I think we... I don't know how we do this. In our minds, we have this status thing. And we see people through our physical eyes. And that's not the way God sees people. We see people by the way they look on the outside. And that's a shame. Because that's not how God sees people. You know, I'm... Oh, look at that. Look at... Oh, they look... Oh, they must be a... You don't know! You can dress up a pig if you want to. <laughs> he sees past all that. God help us. To see past all that? <clears throat> Luke 7, 47, Mark 10, 21, and then 1 John 3, 16, which is another John 3, 16 that's amazingly awesome. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for others, for our brothers and our sisters, 1 John 3.16. Jesus showed His love for all people. Number two. Jesus demonstrated a life without sin. 
You know why that's important? The best preacher you know, the best, your precious little grandmother, who is as saintly as they come, maybe, whoever that person is in your life, that is a saint! Don't have this. Because they sin. The best man or woman you know is still just a man or a woman. And they're flawed. But not this one. Not Jesus. He's the only one. Hebrews 4.15 he was holy. Holy. Such a high priest truly meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Hebrews 7, 26. The only one. Don't you let some TV preacher with big hair tell you otherwise. There's only one. In fact, it's don't you be thinking, oh well, let's all just coexist. There's only one. There's no coexisting. It's Him. Or nothing. Oh, Pastor, uh, I think there's many ways we can all have... There's one way! It's Jesus. That's all. That's all there is. And, and you know why? That it is significant that he was sinless? That makes him worthy. That sets him apart from all of us. He's worthy. Because he never sinned. He's the only one. I want you to get to know our Jesus a little bit better today. I'm talking about Jesus today. Number three. And thanks, Bobby, for giving us a really good segue into this one. Number three, Jesus showed compassion and mercy. Jesus showed compassion and mercy for the multitudes. Matthew 9, 36. For the masses. Now, we... we you know, we pick our... There's certain ones that we really... He didn't care. The masses. The unlovable. That's the ones he loved. Jesus showed compassion for the unfortunate. Matthew 20, 34. For, for the have-nots. For the losers. Jesus showed compassion for Jerusalem. Matthew 23, 37. Don't miss that. Well, I don't think that's fair. Because why did He show favor to them? Because He's Jesus. And they're His people. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're going to someday learn more about that process. Jesus showed compassion for multitudes, for the unfortunate, for Jerusalem, and for the leper in Mark 1.41. You know what lepers' lot in life was? They got this disease, and at this time there, weren't, there, was, no, there was no cure. Their body would begin to become infected and, and literally rot away. And it was contagious, so they, they could not allow these people to stay in the in the, cities, in the, in the there were gated neighborhoods, communities. They were called kibbutzes. And people lived in those societies. And when somebody got leprosy, oh, get them out. Put them outside the gate. They're going to rot out there and they're going to die. Do you know that that's who Jesus had compassion on? So, 
Jesus showed compassion and mercy. Number four. I love this. Jesus is faithful. Now, to a certain extent, we can be faithful. We, we can be faithful to, to come to church. We can be faithful. We can be reliable to a certain degree. We should be. We should be faithful. But Jesus set the example to us by being faithful, by being ultimately reliable. There are days, you know, that our, our smartphones are amazing things. Uh, when your phone rings in whatever irritating ringtone you have, you can look at it and choose eh, uh, and you probably should. Uh-uh. You know that Jesus has never denied a call. Think about that. Man, I'm having one of my days. And it, here it goes. And I'm like, Dear God, not now. Really? It's March. That means I like to watch basketball. <laughs> We're already, I've already told you I'm flawed and I'm very broken. God, not now. Really? Eh. Jesus has never did not. Ever. Ever. Now, there may be times in your life where you don't feel Him. There will be. But it's not because He's not there. Have you noticed Have you noticed that a teacher is always silent during the test? Mm. But he's there. Because he's faithful. He cannot not be there. I'm, I'm talking about my Jesus. I'm wanting you to know because I'm trying in my so much of an inadequate way to explain to you who Jesus is and I'm telling you he's faithful. And you you we we get in our oh we we get this we're in a bad time and we're it's dark and we're frustrated and we're hurt and we're aggravated and we start to you know you start feeling that and it's 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 a, it's a feeling of desperation and lostness and, and ultimately hopelessness. And, and you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm quit. Jesus is faithful. It is impossible for Him to give up on you. It's impossible. He's faithful. It, it's almost like, as I study through this about Jesus, it's, it's almost like, Okay, he's this, he's this, he's this. Man, there's a pattern here. Jesus is like everything I'm not. That's the point. Now, now that you realize Jesus is everything I'm not, now I'm in a prime location. To experience His grace and His mercy. Because as long as there's an adequacy in me, as long as there's an inkling in me of, uh, you know, uh, I still got this. I got it. But 
then you're not going to be aware of Jesus. Because when you come to the end of yourself, and there's nothing left but failure and loneliness and despair, you're ready to understand and experience who our Jesus is. That's who I'm trying to tell you about today. Man, I'm so inadequate. Jesus is faithful. He promised to be with us always. Matthew 28. 20. And we can rest knowing that the Lord is faithful. And He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. For this reason, we can be confident of this. That He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. I didn't say that. And it's a good thing. Because I can't follow through. Jesus said that and He can make it happen. He can make that happen. Because He's faithful. I'm, I'm trying to tell you today it, it, very feebly who Jesus is. Because I want you to know. And my question is, as I conclude this little part of the message, is, do you know Him? Do you know Him? I think this will help us visualize a little bit. The Bible said, my King is the King of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know it? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's impurely powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent and he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And His yoke is easy. And His burden is light. Uh, I wish I could describe Him to you. Yes, He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, 
The Pharisees couldn't stand it, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in it. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him.
have this wreath on our door. Beautiful. Well, the problem is there's birds that get in my wreath. <laughs> you, sometimes you think you're the only one that these things happen to. I'm sure others of you have birds in your wreath. Well, so I open the door. It's dark. Guess what happens? A bird flies in my house! <laughs> It's Sunday morning. I got my regiment. I got to get ready for church because I'm the preacher. I got. I need to be here. And the bird's in my house. Like, okay, at that time, I got to make some decisions. <laughs> and there are several. I won't go into all of them. Because it's not of irrelevant. So... I'm sitting there thinking, I'm looking, I open the door wide open and the bird flies in this room. And he's up on my my window thing. And so I'm over there, get out of here. You know, and of course he flies right by the door. Doesn't go out there, flies into the next room. Lights on my, my window thing. Alright, I got a limited amount of time here. So I go in there and I say, come on man. And he flies right by the door. Does he go out? Of course not. It's Sunday morning. Yeah, I got stuff to do. My wife finds her way down watching, you know, me handle things impressively. So I said, alright, you go over there, I'll go over here and, and we'll chew it out. So she goes in and he, and he flies well, he looks and he kind of flies into the top part of the door, but he don't go out! <laughs> so I'm over here, and I'm like, shooing him over, and I'm flying to Mary, and Mary will shoot him out, and he does it again, and he didn't go out, and I'm just thinking, God, there's, you're probably laughing at me, I know you are, but there's a point here. <laughs> what would it take you know, if I could just communicate with that little bird. And explain to him that he don't belong in my house on Sunday morning. He belongs. God gave you all that space out there and you want to come in my house. If I could just explain to him the plan, we'd be good. But you know what? I'm not a bird. I know it's deep. <laughs> and then I thought about Jesus. And I thought about God the Father. And how we're down here on this earth floundering around. We can't find a way. It's there. Wide open. We flying around, hitting the walls, falling around. And God said, if I could just communicate with these humans, just show them a way out into safety. You know what God did? Jesus. I love my people down there. I can't communicate with you. I need somebody. I need somebody to go down there and become a bird. And Jesus did. That's why he had to become a man. Come down here. Be one of us. And he did it. I don't think he had to. He became a man to show us the way. Because we didn't get it. And we couldn't find it. And we were lost. 1 Corinthians 10 17. For we, being many, are one bread. One body, 
We're all partakers of that one bread. You know what Jesus did? He became the solution to our problem. And when He came here, He got a body like this. It was necessary. And it came a time when He needed to die to take my place, to pay for my transgression. And they broke His body. You can open your little... Now peel the plastic part. Don't, don't open the juice yet. Just peel that plastic part. And pull out your wafer. I apologize. We're not very fancy yet. We don't have all the silver and gold trinkets. But I can tell you this. It's not about the trinkets. It's not even about this wafer. It's about what this represents. The broken body of Jesus. He became one of us. And they killed him. They broke him. They beat him. They humiliated him. And he did that for us. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So church, today, I invite you to join me to take this wafer as we reflect on what Jesus did. Father, Thank you for the broken body that you gave for us. In Jesus' name. Let's take the way. Ain't no magic in this stuff. Boy, it sure represents something real special. The cup represents the blood. You know what? Just the body wouldn't have been enough. It took the blood for the remission of our sins. And today, we drink this little bit of juice to remind us to reflect on the blood that Jesus Christ willingly gave so that you and I could be saved. Father, we accept this as a representation of your blood. We reflect, we remember today. You gave your blood for us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Let's take it. The Bible says in another passage, after they had taken the, <coughs> the body and the cup, that the family sang a song. After we sing this song, let us go out with rejoicing and let us continue to celebrate the life and the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's stand.
Shadow. There's no shadow. 